Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the White Tails Dynasty as we have a doubleheader in this episode going up against Ohio and Tulsa. Looking at the top 25, I initially thought that Auburn dropped out of that number one spot. It just They just lost it for one week. So they are still undefeated and back at number one. But looking at the rest of the top 25, there are actually a couple teams from our conference in the top 25, Vanderbilt and also Appalachian State. Looking at the Heisman watch, Shivers and Gatewood, both from Auburn, are both on the Heisman watch. It seems like they are just unstoppable in this dynasty. And then our conference is interesting. Appalachian State is undefeated in top 10 in the country their first year in this conference. And Marquette, with that loss last episode, they dropped to 3-2. and two. Vanderbilt is 6-0 and oh on our side of the conference. They play Georgia next week or this week, so we'll see if they come out of that game with the victory. But if they do, they will jump up pretty high, I'm guessing, in the top 10, beating a Georgia team. So we are going up against Ohio first, and they aren't bad themselves as they actually went 10-2 last season as they did get promoted into our conference from the MAC. It seemed like the MAC was a little too easy for them, so that was a team I chose out of that conference. And their head coach did move on, so they have a first-year head coach, but he's not off to a bad start at all. And they have actually a pretty good offense and defense as they are actually loaded and pretty much primed in recruiting. A lot of these recruits that I see, they're pretty much headed to Ohio, Ohio State in the Midwest. I mean, they're doing pretty well. So looking at our, our recruiting, we're actually doing pretty well as well. Anderson Reed, who's a pretty good defensive end, who I'm hoping maybe one of the guys that takes over for Shaq Royal, he is close to committing. Bobby Marshall in the lead for, and then a couple of guys at the bottom of our board here that are pretty, they aren't custom recruits, but at least, you know, we have some other guys that were top five interested. Remember, our recruiting rules are top five interested and are in the Midwest. Those are the only guys we can go after and that are equal to le or less to our prestige. So let's get this game underway. We're going up against Ohio in this first game, and we know they are tough. And out comes Adam Miller, our leader at quarterback. So first play from the shotgun. Here is Miller scrambling out to the right side. He's going to buy some time and lob it to the right. He's got Marlon Yarbrough with a catch on the sideline. And our receivers are having a really good season so far. So here's a handoff up the middle. This time, Jacoby Beck is going to fight forward for 11 yards. Our run defense is do a run offense is doing pretty well as well. I think our line has definitely contributed to that as we throw to the right side on third and 10. And there is Yarbrough, but only getting three yards. And right away, we had to punt the ball away. So Ohio does get it inside the red zone. Here is Mishler with the throw out to the right side. He's got hooks who throws oh, a mean stiff arm on Elgin Lloyd. That is a touchdown. Wow, just take a look. He just tosses him like a little kid. And now Ohio takes the 7-0 lead. So here is Jabari Blaze on the next drive, getting a carry up the middle. He's got a gain of five. Bring it to a third and five this time. Throw out to the right side. It's Xavier Storm, the true freshman. And he's got a gain of 12 and a first down. So now four wide receivers out there. Miller throws across the middle. It's Storm again, fighting forward for another first down. He's having a good freshman season and making a big impact on this offense. Second and nine. Throw out to the right side. Brett Hill this time. He's getting 16 yards up the field, beating man coverage. And he's a senior, we're gonna have to replace him, but he gets the first down. So here's Jabari Blaze inside the 10 yard line and there is a carry five yards up the middle, Jabari. And he ties this game up at seven apiece. So here comes Ohio back on an offense. Here's Mishler throw out to the right side. He's got Antoine Ivy 18 yards for the first down. Ohio is looking good on offense early. So now play action this time. Mishler, he's going to take it himself to the right side. Nobody's out there to contain him. He gets tripped up at about the three-yard line by Marvin Woods, but a gain of 19. So on to the second quarter. Here's a carry up the middle. This time Fletcher, Todd Fletcher, he's a power back. He doesn't get a gain of anything, bringing it to a third and goal. They give it right back to him this time. He gets to about the inch-yard line and falls down, 
and Brad Robinson on the stop. And they are going to line up to go for it. Can we make the stop here? Fourth and goal. Gotcha, Hand up, up the middle. And that's a stop that time. Tucker Akakwo and a gang of other white tails in the backfield. That play had no chance. Good goal line stand by our defense. So now here we are back on our offense. Miller trying to buy some time, and he gets sacked in the pocket. And that is going to be a loss of six yards. Zach Burks gets in. So now second and 16. Miller throw across the middle, and it's going to be picked off by Collier. And Marlon Yarbrough should have been led a little bit more to the right. That's a nice play by Collier, though, stepping up and making that interception. So Ohio does settle for the field goal on that next drive as we come back out on offense. Can we... Uh, drive down the field and possibly take the lead. Ohio has a really good defense and exacts Xavier Storm for a 10 yard game. So here is Jabari Blaze getting the handoff up the middle. He's got a gain of eight as he moves the ball across the 50. So now second and 10 here from the pistol formation. Jabari barely fights for the first down and he's got 32 yards off of six carries. So we decided to go right back to him. Here he is finding another hole up the middle, six yards. And the running game is working here on this drive as this clock ticks down within one minute in the first half. So here is Miller, throw across the middle, and it's going to be Doug Johnson who can't hold on to it in traffic. And that is going to be knocked away. And now we get into a third and 18. Miller going to throw right back to that same spot, and it's picked off a little bit overthrown on that one. And it's the interception, his second of the half. And now Ohio goes into halftime with that 10 to seven lead. So now here we are to start the second half. Here is Rodney Ross in the game. He gets a catch on the outside, fighting his way up the field for a gain of 19. So now first and 10, now past the 30 yard line. Here is a carry up the middle, that's Jabari. And he's got a gain of about seven yards. So we decide to go right back to him. Second and three, this time finding an open hole. He's been running the ball well in this one. And he's got four yards, first down. So now here we are inside the red zone, third and 10 now. Miller's gonna scramble out to the right side, gonna throw it out that way. He's got Brett Hill who gets tackled at about the 15 yard line. This Ohio defense is tough as we have to settle for the field goal on that drive. So here we are back on our defense. Here's Ivy getting the catch to the left side and he's breaking a tackle and running down the sideline to about the 30 yard line. This Ohio offense isn't bad at all. Carry out to the right side. Fletcher picks up a huge block. Beaver just gets pancaked on that one. Wow. And now they pick up a gain of 20 as our defense cannot stop their offense. So here they are lined up in the Wildcat this time. Trying to take it himself as Fletcher on a third and one, but he can't get to the first down marker. That's a stop in the backfield. Shaq Royals in. And we get them to at least settle for the field goal. So here we are back on an offense. Here is Adam Miller scrambling out to the right side. Buying some time, throwing out to the middle, and that's Jabari. A lot of open field, and he's getting to about the 30-yard line on that catch and run, a big gain on that one, and that is a big first down. So now here we are, almost at the 30-yard line. Throw across the middle, Rodney Ross, who's been involved in this one. He's got 12 yards on that reception. So now third and three, here's a carry up the middle. That's Jabari, who's going to fight to about the 10-yard line, but can't get more, and now Ohio makes us settle for yet another field goal. This one looks like it's gonna come down to the wire. So here is Mishler on the offensive side of things for Ohio, throwing a screen pass out to the left side. Todd Fletcher gets stopped, and that's only a gain of two as Ohio settles for yet another field goal. So now we wind this clock down, six minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Here is Miller, scrambling out to the right side, gonna throw that way, he's got Brett Hill, who man, could have broke it if Doug Johnson had that first block on that one. But anyway, I'll take the first down. So now first and 10 at about the 49 yard line. Here's Blaze, another carry up the middle. He's got nine yards. And like I said, he's been running the ball well as we decide to run this clock a little bit. Give it right back to him. Another big gain of about seven. And that's Jabari Blaze. And he's got about a five yard carry, yards per carry average in this game. So throw out to the right side. This time, Xavier Storm's open, and that's 15 yards for the first down. So now third and five inside the red zone. Throw across the middle, and that is Bam Cameron. Take a look at how close this one was 
to an interception. Bam Cameron just literally takes it away from the from the defender. So handoff up the middle. This time Jabari Blaze is gonna fight in four yards out for the touchdown. And now we finally get a touchdown on the board as we take the six point lead. But take a look at this. UConn has upset Appalachian State. So wow, Appalachian State gets their first loss and that may open the door for other teams on the other side of the conference. So now down by four, here is uh, Ohio back on an offense. That's Tracy Liston as he gets about 11 yard gain. So first and 10, screen pass out to the right side. Perfect blocking for Fletcher as he throws a stiff arm and gets upfield and fights his way forward for about a 23 yard gain. And Ohio is looking good here out on offense with two minutes left. Mitchler, can we come up with a stop? Throw to the left side. He's got hooks and he's inside the five yard line. Shane hooks a gain of 25 yards. So first and goal, they need a touchdown here. Scramming out to the right side is Mitchell. He breaks a tackle and gets to about the two yard line. And now we gotta make a stop as we call a timeout to preserve the clock. So third and goal, hand off up the middle. That's a great stop in the backfield. And now we get him to a fourth and goal. A stop wins it here. Now Mitchell from the shotgun. He's got three wide receivers out to the left side and a bunch. Throws out to the right on a screen and Fletcher gets in for the touchdown. Take a look. The guard, number 65 that is, throws a huge block and just gets in the way of Marvin Jones. And wow, they get in the end zone. And now it's a three point game. So now we have to drive the field here with two timeouts. Here's a throw out to the right side. That's caught Marley Yarbrough for a gain of 10. Deep shot down the right, right side, line up the seam, and that's gonna be dropped by Xavier Storm. That may be a big drop in this one. Throw across the middle of the field on third and 10. We go right back to him, and Xavier Storm holds on to it in traffic. Big first down. Throw out to the left side on the next play. That Storm again, 15 yards, and he's getting open in this one. Nine catches, 97 yards. So 15 seconds left. Can we get closer to a field goal? Here's a throw to the right. That is Yarbrough. And now we're thinking touchdown with 10 seconds left. We're going to try one to the end zone. 10 seconds. Here is Miller. No, we're going to dump it off short. Jacoby fights forward. And he gets to about the four-yard line. And we are going to call a timeout and think about it here. And come out here with four seconds left. I think we got enough time to run a play. Here we come out in kind of the flanker here. And look at this. They call a timeout. They want to see what we're in. We line up exactly the same, run the exact same play. Throw across the middle, it's Brett Hill. Touchdown, and number three gets into the end zone, and that one will be the game. What a drive here for the White Tails at home. Brett Hill, the transfer, comes in. Two years of his production, it's been well worth it. And number 56, I believe that is, he had the middle of the field. He had to choose. We had two slant routes in the same area. He went for the second one. It leaves Brett Hill wide open, and we come away with the comeback victory as we struggle on offense in this game. Ohio has a really, really good team. That's a great win at home as we come away with the four-point victory. What a game. Jabari Blaze ran the ball. Probably the best he's ever run at this season. 16 carries, 80 yards, and two touchdowns. Xavier Storm almost eclipses 100 yards in this one. Brett Hill, six receptions, 71 yards, and a touchdown. It was just a great all-around victory for this team. Also, our defense played really well. That goal line stand in the first half really, really made a difference. And honestly, I mean, our defensive line balled out in this one. All those guys. Shaq Royal, I can, I continue to say it. He's having the best year of his career. So now we go up against a Tulsa team who was 0-7. This is not a good game at all. And they have lost every single game by giving up so many points. They scored points, but their defense is just not playing well. So let's hop into this second doubleheader. Here is Miller starting out this game. Throw it out to left side. And that's a catch by Marlon Yarbrough. Take a look at this Mahomes type play from Adam Miller running all around the pocket and he just drops back, buys a little time 
and finds his man, Marlon Yarbrough, who actually got shaken up on this play and goes down pretty hard. And he's actually going to be in the concussion protocol as he comes out of the game. So now we fast forward to about three minutes left here in the first quarter. Here is Xavier Storm in the red zone, and he's got about a gain of four. So third and 10, play action fake. This time Miller could buy a little bit of time. Throw out to the right side. He's got Coretta, but he's only getting a gain of a maybe one. And now we line up to go for it here on a fourth and two. This time Miller throws out to the right side, and it's going to be picked off by Davis Tulsa. Picks it off, and he's going to return it, and he's going to get tackled at about the 47-yard line. I don't know what Chris Coretta was running on that one. He kind of just – he could have had – he had an option route to just sit there. He should have. It was an open zone. That's what I was expecting as Tulsa does end up getting three points. But back on an offense, here is a throw across the middle. Brett Hill's open, 37 yards, and he gets about a gain of 37 as he gets it inside the 10-yard line. Here's a throw across the middle. Chris Coretta's in. He's in for the touchdown, taking advantage of the playing time now that Marlon Yarbrough's out, and he gets in for his first score of the season. So here's Coretta back out on offense, and he's getting going, getting him going early and often. And remember our old tight end? He's still here, and he picks up a nice first down. Throw out to the right side. There he is again, 12 yards. As I don't know if the defense was game planning for Chris Coretta, but it's working so far as he's been open early and often. So here is Brett Hill running over a defender. Make it two, and he's getting inside the five-yard line. Take a look. Running over two guys on that play, and that is a first down inside the five-yard line. Handoff. Adam Murphy's in the game. Touchdown. And Adam Murphy is the power back in this running back by committee. And, wow, this is, this is pretty good. We just need to get our offense going because next week we have Vanderbilt coming up, and here is a sack that time. Ryan Robinson, he gets in as they do try to kick the field goal before half, but it's going to be short, and we are going to try to run this back. Xavier Storm's got the speed. Let's see if he can outrun the defense. Here is Storm out to the right, makes two men miss, and number 37 is hawking him, so he's going to pitch it back to Tucker Okonkwo, and we try to get the lateral game going, but it doesn't work. But it's pretty fun to see that as we go into halftime, 14-3. to three. So here we go to start the second half. Still up by two scores. Miller, he's going to try to scramble up the middle, buys a little time and tries to fight his way in. He gets tackled at about the one-yard line, a gain of 11, though, as we bring in Jabari Blaze for the handoff from the pistol formation. He's going to try to fight in, and he will. Touchdown. Two yards out. Jabari Blaze having himself... A couple of good games here, and that is a 21-3 to lead. So now on to the third quarter. Here is Francis Smith getting in. He's got 11 yards, as that's a name to watch out for in the future. He's a redshirt freshman. He was a recruit two years ago, and here he is on the sideline once again, number 15. He's 6'5". He's got a lot of size. I want to give him a good look at receiver. He probably won't get in much this year unless there's an injury. But he is, he's a big receiver. He's got speed. I'm excited to see what he can do for the future of this offense. So now on a third and 15, here is Adam Miller scrambling out to the left side. He gets hit on the throw. And we do have to settle for the field goal on that drive. So now we fast forward now inside of four minutes. Here is Xavier Storm getting the catch across the middle. And he's going to cough it up. And Davis once again is around the ball this game. He falls on it this time. And now Tulsa takes back over at about the seven yard line. So four minutes left here in this game. Here's Anderson pumping out to the right, throwing deep. He's got a man that is wise and he's getting down to about the 49 yard line. That is a great throw. But Zane Alexander in man coverage got beat on that one. So now first and 10 at about the 48. Scr screen pass out to the left side, and it's picked off by Zane Alexander. He makes up for it, and he's going to take it all the way, and that is a touchdown, and that one will take us to the end of this game. Zane Alexander makes up for the mistake to play earlier, and that's exactly what you want to see out of these defenders, making up for bad plays, and this one propels us to a win as Adam Miller comes away with player of the game. And this was a good 2-0 stretch as we continue the win streak as we still only have 
one loss here in this season. What a stretch of games here that we are playing. And I got to admit, our defense is just balling out of control, especially these linebackers and this defensive line. We've been getting to the quarterback quite a bit as Xavier Storm had a good game this one. Yarbrough had that first catch. He got knocked out of the game, but it turns out he will actually be all right and be back next week as Derek and Pinto had two sacks in this one. And Ryan Robinson also had a sack as Marvin Woods and Zane Alexander also had interceptions. So we do get some recruiting news after this episode. Julian Gonzalez, Trayvon White, Marquise Moore, and Ryan Chang all commit to our school as so does Anderson Reed and Charles Davis. But Xavier Oaks, who we were counting on as being a cornerback we could probably redshirt and he will be ready to go in two years, he commits to Wake Forest. So we miss out on him, but we do get two more recruits here as we move into week 10. And here we go, our toughest task of the season. Number seven undefeated 8-0 Vanderbilt. They ended up beating Georgia and are undefeated in top 10. Who saw that coming? As this is going to be our toughest task yet as the committee has decided to rank the Whitetails for the first time in this dynasty. Number 25. So we are ranked for the first time. Can we come away with the victory versus a top 10 team. This is for the division. Hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it, let's go.